What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Carter Scotland Allen here, and today we are going to be reviewing probably your favorite Batman film to date. It's my favorite Batman film to date so far, up until, you know, the release of The Batman. You don't know after that, so I'm going to see that this weekend. We'll see. But this is The Dark Knight, directed by Christopher Nolan. Let's not waste any more time and review this damn film. Okay, so The Dark Knight was released in 2008. This was once again directed by Christopher Nolan, again starring Christian Bale as Batman Bruce Wayne, and we have Heath Ledger as the Joker. The best Joker we've had ever. This film was written by David S. Goyer once again, just like Batman Begins, as well as Christopher Nolan and his brother, Jonathan Nolan. With the help of allies Lieutenant Jim Gordon and DA Harvey Dent, Batman has been able to keep a tight lid on crime in Gotham City. But when a vile young criminal calling himself the Joker suddenly throws the town into chaos, the caped crusader begins to tread a fine line between heroism and vigilantism. Okay, and as for the directing of this film, first off, I just gotta say, it, it's, it's damn near perfect. Um, and that is also in part due to the, the casting, the acting of the cast, um, the, the story as a whole. Uh, overall, Christopher Nolan really knows how to bring the audience along through the story without spoon-feeding them, but also without making it feel like it's impossible to solve the story. Nolan does a great job at making the audience feel like you are in the eyes of the Batman, not in a visual sense in basically any way, but no matter what scene you are watching, you are meant to feel and you're made to feel the emotions that the characters are feeling on the screen, whether it be all of the you know, people and the civilians on the ferries in the end of the film, whether it be the Joker hanging upside down um, and just laughing, whether it be the, the guy in the jail cell with the phone in his stomach. No matter what character you're watching on screen, no matter what's happening on screen, whether it's involving a character or not, it could just be you know a fight sequence, it could have just been a shot of Gotham. No matter what you're looking at, you're, there's a reason for that. So overall, like the direction of this film, Christopher Nolan just nailed it because he knew what he wanted from the cast, he knew what he wanted from the visual style, and every little piece put together just makes this masterpiece of the film. And uh, to this day, up until the release of The Batman, haven't seen The Batman yet, but this is the best Batman film ever made. And the fact that they absolutely nailed the dynamic between Batman and the Joker. So, uh, on that note, let's start talking about the cast and the characters. So, for the cast and the characters, of course, we have Christian Bale as Batman and Bruce Wayne. He does a fantastic job, again. Um, I don't think this is actually his best performance as Bruce Wayne. I think it is his best performance as Batman, but I think his best Bruce Wayne is yet to come, uh, and that we'll see in The Dark Knight Rises. However, I think this this Batman and the dynamic between Batman and the Joker is just absolutely killer. The whole interrogation scene in Gotham PD, fantastic. The final fight sequence between the Joker and Batman, also fantastic. There's really no complaints when it comes to Batman and the Joker in this film, and that's that's what people want when you see Batman and the Joker in a film. And with the, the tease of the Joker card in the end of Batman Begins, this movie had a lot of hype and a lot to live up to. So uh, it, they killed it. Everybody killed it. Um, Heath Ledger did a fantastic job. Rest in peace. I would like to go back and watch all of his filmography because this role alone is, is perfect. He is perfect as this version of the Joker. Uh, it is nothing like most comic book versions of the Joker, most animated versions of the Joker. It, it's very different, and that's why this, this grounded take works. He is evil. The 
pencil to the head, threatening to blow up the fairies, blowing up a hospital, actually blowing up Rachel, and almost killing Harvey Dent. So this version of the Joker is really maniacal and evil, and I, I just have to give credits to the writing of you know David S. Goyer and Christopher Nolan and his brother Jonathan Nolan but also just this performance by Heath Ledger I can I could go on and on about it um but also once again we have Michael Caine as Alfred he does a fantastic job every piece of dialogue that he delivers is really really meaningful not in not in every sense to the story but to Bruce particularly uh, if that makes any sense, it's just like any time that he's on screen, any line that he delivers, you know that it's coming from Alfred's heart. Uh, whether it is rude, whether it's sarcastic, whether it's to uh, people that aren't Bruce. Um, but yeah, the, this film is fantastic. We have Lucius Fox, uh, once again played by Morgan Freeman. Um, fantastic. The, I, I don't have any complaints. That's so crazy. Like, Batman Begins, I have complaints about uh, Ra's al Ghul. And in The Dark Knight Rises, I have complaints about some of the characters in that. This film, I don't have any complaints about the characters. Uh, I would say the only real casting choice that is kind of iffy is Maggie Gyllenhaal. But even then, I found her to be more entertaining than Katie Holmes. Um, But, I mean, she gets killed off anyways, so there's no... I mean... It's really just that that leverage to to finally push Two Face into um, well push Harvey Dent into becoming Two Face as well as bringing the realization to Batman that you know he can't do everything right he's gotta he's gotta break some rules and we see that with the whole uh, cell phone radar bat radar throughout the city and uh, with that I guess we'll start talking about the story. So for the story, uh, this film, once again, I feel like I'm saying the same thing over again. It's damn near perfect. The, the flow of this whole entire story is, is phenomenal. It is paced so well. You, you never feel a really dull moment. And if there's any inkling that you might be getting bored or lost in any way, you get sucked right back in. Like every piece of dialogue, like even Lucius Fox talking to, uh, the businessman, um, and, you know, leaving his phone there so that, like, every scene is integral. So you have to pay attention, uh, but it's also, it doesn't feel like you're forced to pay attention because every scene you want to pay attention. And that's that's not often the case with just most movies in general, uh, sometimes just superhero movies in general. This really was ahead of its time. There's a reason Heath Ledger is known as the best version of the Joker. There's a reason this is most commonly known as the best Batman film, uh, and that's because it truly is. So uh, now let's talk about the cinematography. So this partially goes in with the visual effects and the stunts and the practical effects. Everything visually in this film is so fun to watch. The semi-truck flipping over, the whole... Uh, semi truck chase sequence with the you know the bazooka and trying to track down Harvey Dent like everything about that was was really fantastic. Anytime the Batmobile is on screen or the tumbler, I should say, anytime the tumbler's on screen, you're gonna have fun. Speak of the tumbler, we got it right here. Got it right here in Lego. Um, so yeah, anytime the tumbler was on screen, I had fun. Uh, seeing the bat cycle come out of the tumbler was awesome. It's always awesome. Every time I see it, I'm like, whoa, like that bat cycle is so cool. The way that the, the tires spin, but yet he stays in the same place. Um, I know that's, that's not part of really the, the technical aspect of the cinematography, but everything in this film is fun to look at. And if there's not something super, uh, engaging, like action wise or, character wise there's always something to look at in the background i could go on and on about almost nothing with this film that sounds bad and it almost sounds like a negative but when that when you like almost everything about a movie it's hard to pick what you want to talk about because i love this cast the performances are awesome the stakes are really high the villain is evil uh 
and that's what you want. Like there were some moments in this where my girlfriend had to look away and you wouldn't think of that when you think of a Batman film. Um, and I'm not saying that needs to be the regular or that needs to be the standard, but this film did some things differently and you gotta, you gotta give it to Christopher Nolan and, and everybody attached to this film. All right, so now on to the final thoughts. Obviously, you can tell the, this movie is an absolute own it. You know, if you if you are a superhero fan in any way, buy this film. If you love Batman, go out and buy the Steel Book, buy the you know the the trilogy collection. I don't even know if I have the Batman: The Dark Knight trilogy. I need to check now. I don't think I have the Dark Knight trilogy. I need to get that. Seriously, this film is. I have said about the other previous Batman films, like, if you're not a superhero fan, most of those films just don't ever watch. I would say, if you're not a superhero fan, give this movie a try. Don't even watch Batman Begins. Just give this film a try because it is so fantastic. The opening scene alone will will capture you. It, it really brings you in. And also, I just love the idea of the fact that each opening sequence in each of Christopher Nolan's version of Batman has the main villain disguised as himself, essentially, disguised as his henchman. Um, so yes, we have the Joker uh, disguised as, you know, one of the Joker's henchmen with just a clown mask and that whole heist sequence. Everything about this film is so fun. It's so fantastic. It's dark, but yet sometimes funny. Uh, the Joker being the Joker, his, some of his lines are, are really great and you're like, you laugh at them, but not because he's funny, but because he's fucking psycho. Uh, I need to stop talking about this movie because I'm just babbling. I love it. You guys know I love it at this point. Just go buy the film. If you're going to watch the new Batman film, just watch this going into it because it's fun. And it brings back like fun memories of Batman. And this just made me more excited to go see Robert Pattinson's Batman. And I, I don't have any... Any inkling of, like, negativity coming from Robert Pattinson's Batman, I just, I feel like it's going to be a fun ride no matter what. Even if it's not my favorite, I just, I, I can tell that I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, but this is my review of uh, The Dark Knight. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I will be watching The Dark Knight Rises and reviewing that. So stay tuned for that video. I am Carter Scotland Allen, and I will see you guys in my next movie review. Peace.